Well, hello everyone, and welcome to the channel. Uh, today's video, we're going to talk about digital pulse width modulation, or just digital PWM for short. And we're going to talk about how it works, what it's used for, and I am going to show you guys how to actually implement this. All right, so stay tuned. Hope you enjoy the video. Okay, so first off, what is pulse width modulation, or just PWM? Well, PWM is a method of controlling the average output of an electronic power circuit. And most electronic power circuits can either be fully on or fully off, so in order to regulate the output, the circuit must be pulsed. All right, just for example, let's consider this diagram, which is possibly the simplest electronic power circuit of all. And it just has the battery, the light bulb, and it, the light bulb is switched on and off by the transistor. But as we said, the transistor can either be fully on or fully off. If it's halfway on or halfway off, it will be ruined in less than a second. So we can't really regulate the output of the light bulb at first glance, right? Well, we can with pulse width modulation. So in the case of our light bulb, transistor, and battery, PWM can be used to regulate how bright the light bulb appears. The transistor would be pulsed on and off rapidly. How often the pulse is high or how often the transistor remained on would affect how bright the light bulb appears. If the transistor is on for longer than it is off, the light bulb would appear brighter. If the transistor is off for longer than it is on, the light bulb would appear darker. So as you can see, pulse width modulation can effectively change the average output voltage of an electronic circuit. So far, this is a pretty basic concept, and most people who understand electronics already understand this. But what a lot of people don't know is how to actually generate a pulse width modulation signal. So there are primarily two ways to generate the signal. There's an analog way and a digital way. And primarily in this video, we're going to focus on the digital way, but just for the sake of comparison, we're going to look at the analog way first. So first, we're going to look at generating analog pulse width modulation. This is really not that hard. We only need three things. First, we need a triangle wave generator, then we need a reference voltage, and finally, a comparator. So this is what an analog PWM circuit actually looks like. Now, the heart of this circuit really is the comparator. Here's how it works. The comparator analyzes the reference voltage signal and the triangle wave signal. Now, whenever the triangle wave signal is higher than the reference voltage signal, the comparator's output is high. And whenever the triangle wave output is less than the reference voltage, the output voltage is low. So by changing the reference voltage, we can easily change the duty cycle or how long the output is high. So that's basic analog pulse width modulation. But how do we get to digital pulse width modulation? The easiest way to do it, in my own opinion, is to use a computer. Let me show you how. Before I can show you how to generate digital PWM with a computer, there's a few things that we're going to have to understand about computers first. Please bear with me. Now, in most computers, most all of them have some sort of CPU, and most all CPUs have something called registers. And registers are areas in the CPU that serve as tiny memory banks. They remember numbers, results from calculations, locations of other registers or other areas of memory. Now we can use the registers inside the CPU to help us generate pulse width modulation. Now in addition to the registers, the CPUs also have something called instructions. Instructions are actually just commands that we give to the CPU that make them do certain things. They can move numbers into and out of the registers and they can move numbers into and out of data ports. In addition to these things, we can also tell the CPU to compare two different numbers, and this is key. Now that we understand those things about the computer, it's time to move on. Digital and analog PWM are actually quite similar. Both analog and digital PWM use a reference signal and a triangle signal. The difference is, these signals in digital PWM, instead of being analog voltages, they are actually numbers that are stored in the CPU's register. And instead of an analog comparator comparing the voltages, the CPU actually compares the two numbers to find out which one is higher. So in order to generate digital pulse width modulation, the only thing that you really need is a computer and an understanding of how to program it. One register needs to be a reference signal that will stay at a fixed value or that will change depending on what you want your duty cycle to be, and the other register needs to be a value that continuously increases to its peak value, and then with each cycle of the CPU goes down one until it gets to zero. Let me show you a code I've written. Here's an example of code that I wrote for an x86 CPU that'll actually produce pulse width modulation. It won't actually go anywhere because we can't actually access output ports from inside of an emulator, but nonetheless the point is proven. In this code example, AX is the reference signal and CX will be the triangle signal. As you can see, AX is set to 7F, that's actually half of 255, and immediately what happens is CX is incremented and compared to see if it's at its full value yet. Now if CX is all the way up, it'll jump down to the clear routine where CX will then start counting down. But if it's not at its full value yet, a comparison will be made between AX and CX. And this is where it's just like analog PWM, just like the comparator comparing the reference and the triangle. 
JA actually means jump above, so that means if AX is better than CX, we will go to out H. Out H will set the bits high, it'll set BX to 1. If it's not doing any of that, it'll jump back to the top and try again. Eventually, CX will come all the way up, we'll go down to clear, we'll start counting CX down. And if CX is at 0, we'll go back up and start counting it back up. But if AX is actually below CX, then we're actually going to set the bits low. And you can see in out L, we'll X or BX, that'll set it to zero and jump clear. Okay, so I do apologize if that was a little bit too much. If you're sitting there watching this video thinking, whoa, I didn't think we were going to get into all this, I do apologize. But um, nonetheless, it's time to ask that question again. Does it actually work? It's nice if it works in theory, but if it doesn't work in the real world, then it's absolutely useless. So we're going to try to see if this actually works in the real world. Now, in order to prove it, we are actually going to program a computer and see if it works, but we're not going to program an x86 type CPU because that would be a little bit too clumsy and cumbersome. So I've got an Arduino board and we're going to write code for it and we're going to see if this digital PWM stuff actually works. Okay, as I said, we're going to be using an Arduino to do this. It'll be the Mega Model 2560 and this is the code that I wrote for it. This is the code that we're going to be using. It's basically the same as the x86 code that I showed, but um, this is for the Arduino. It has a different instruction set and the other thing is it can take a value in from the analog to digital converter. So that means I can use a potentiometer to change the reference and change the duty cycle. So without further ado, let's see if it works. Okay, so as you can see from this clip, we have the Arduino board, it's powered up, and we have the potentiometer hooked up to it, the LED hooked up to it, and as you can see, the code appears to work. And when we turn the potentiometer, we can make the light brighter or dimmer. And just for good measure, I hooked the oscilloscope up, and clearly we can see from the video, the trace is in fact pulse width modulation. So the point is proven, it does work. These are just a few of the applications where digital PWM is used. One of them is automotive lighting, stop lights, uh, the turn indicators. These used to be two separate bulbs, and now most of the time they're actually one, and whether they're bright, dim, or flashing is computer controlled, and it's done using digital PWM. Automotive drivetrains, especially the drivetrains in um, electric vehicles or hybrid cars, the inverters and the converters and voltage regulation uses pulse width modulation and more often than not this is done digitally. The computer reads an exact position of the motor so it makes sense it should be able to output down to the decimal point the exact voltage needed. Digital PWM is used in very many applications but the last example is LCD displays. The backlighting in LCD displays is often adjustable, you can change the brightness and as you note in most displays you can change it down to the exact digit of whatever brightness that you want once again this is an example of digital pwm once again guys i thank you for watching if you have any comments or questions you know where to reach me the information is displayed here on the last slide i uh, hope you guys have a good day and a good rest of your year thanks again for watching